and 12 more. Perfect. Okay, that'll be good. That's all? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi there. Welcome back to Graceful Getaways. I suppose you aren't here to book a trip this week either. That's okay. Now might not be a great time to travel. We just heard about a crazy news report. Apparently yesterday evening, a nonstop cross the country flight had a bit of an emergency. Somehow the meals that were served on board had been mishandled. Everyone who ate the fish became violently ill. <gasps> Oh, thankfully, a former pilot on board didn't eat, and he was able to safely land the plane. Some people were calling it a miracle. Either way, it was a good thing that no one got hurt. Okay, Maggie, well, speaking of eating, I think we should play a little game that has to do with food. Ooh, I love food. Let's play. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do, is we're each gonna take a moment and we're gonna think of a food, and then we're gonna turn around and act that food out, and you have to see if you can guess it, okay? Oh, okay, I think I understand. So the person who isn't acting it out will guess what the other person is acting out? That's exactly right, And Maggie. it's all foods? Yep, okay. all foods. Perfect, are you ready? Oh, I'm totally ready. Okay, I'll go first, because I got a good one. You ready? Okay, I know what it is. It's eating corn, corn on the cob. You are right, good job. Okay. Let's see okay. if we can do this one. It looks like a snack of some sort. Oh, dropped it. Uh, oh, is it popcorn? Yes, you got it, you yes. got it. Okay, you ready for mine? Yep. Okay. Okay, it looks like a vertical sandwich. Am I getting close? Oh, it's a taco. It's a taco. Good job. Good job. Okay, I've got one here. Okay. Oh, is it a hamburger? No, it's oh. close. Is it a huge sandwich? Yes, you got it. Yes. Okay, you ready for mine? Yep. Okay. Okay, ice cream. That one's easy. Got that one's it. easy. So fast. Okay, here's the one. Okay, it looks like you're to spill it. Uh, is it soup? You got it. Yes. You got it. Okay, last one. Are okay, you ready? I'm this ready. one's kind of hard. Okay. Okay. It looks like maybe that's noodles of some sort. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Maybe spaghetti? You got it. Good job. That was a really fun game, and it made me really hungry. Are you getting hungry? I am getting hungry. <laughs> wow, that was so fun. You guys at home should try to play it with your families. You know, in the Bible story that we're gonna hear today, Jesus and his disciples were with a large crowd of people. They didn't have anything to eat. And Jesus told his disciples to go and give them something to eat. Well, yeah, they're hungry. This sounds like it's gonna be another miracle of Jesus. Maggie, you're exactly right. Today, we will learn another one of Jesus' miracles. <laughs> Remember, kids, a miracle is an unusual event that only God can cause to happen. Jesus didn't do miracles just to impress people, but why did Jesus perform all of these miracles? Hey, I'm really glad that you asked that, Maggie. That's our big picture question that we're asking. Uh, why did Jesus perform miracles? <gasps> I remember the answer. Jesus performed miracles to glorify God, to show he's the son of God, and to care for people. You are exactly right. And I wonder if you guys at home also got that right too. Now, I think it's about time to watch our story together. So let's go ahead and watch it. And the story's called Jesus Fed the Crowd. Jesus' disciples had been hard at work. They had been healing people and teaching them. So many people came and went that the disciples did not even have time to eat. So Jesus said to them, Come with me. Let's go to a quiet place where we can be alone and get some rest. Jesus and his disciples got into a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee. But many people saw them leaving. The people traveled by foot and they ran ahead of Jesus. When Jesus and his disciples got to the shore, the people were already there waiting for them. Jesus saw the crowd and he cared about them 
because they were like sheep who needed a shepherd. So Jesus taught the people many things about God's kingdom, and he healed people who were sick. By this time, it was late in the day. Jesus' disciples came to him and said, We are out in the middle of nowhere, and it's getting late. Tell the people to go away so they can go to the farms and villages to buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus said, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus' disciples were confused. We can't feed this many people, they said. It would cost a whole year's pay to buy enough bread for them to eat, Philip said. Jesus asked, How many loaves of bread do you have? Go look. Jesus' disciple Andrew said, A boy here has five loaves and two fish, but what good will that do for so many people? Jesus told the disciples to instruct everyone to sit down. So all the people sat down in big groups on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, and then he blessed the bread. He broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples. He also divided up the fish. The disciples passed out the food to the people, and everyone ate until they were full. Then Jesus told the disciples to collect any leftover food. The disciples collected 12 baskets full of pieces of bread and fish. Jesus fed about 5,000 men that day, plus women and children. By feeding the 5,000, Jesus provided for the physical needs of the crowd. The next day, Jesus called himself the bread of life. Only Jesus is able to satisfy our souls forever by providing forgiveness, peace with God, and eternal life. Sometimes I think about how frustrated the disciples probably felt at the start of the story. Let's think about it. They were tired, they were hungry, they were trying to get a break from the crowd. Think of all the people that had followed Jesus to this place. That's really true. I really don't like it when I am hungry. So I would have been super grumpy if I was a disciple. Maggie, I'm really glad that you weren't a disciple or one in that situation then. <laughs> Me too. When the disciples saw the huge crowd waiting for Jesus on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, they probably had a lot of anger bubbling up inside of them. Kind of like I probably would have felt. But what did Jesus do? How did he respond to everyone? Well, the Bible tells us that he saw them and he felt compassion. He knew the crowd was filled with people who were lost sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd, and he wanted to take care of the people. So let's do this. Let's think back to the disciples again. As it got later and later, they finally had a chance to get away from the crowd by sending them away to get food. If I had been one of the disciples when Jesus told me to give them food, I might have lost my temper a little bit. Yeah, if being tired, hungry, and surrounded by strangers weren't irritating enough, now, Jesus was asking the disciples to do something that was essentially impossible. But remember, Maggie, it was only impossible for them, that nothing is impossible for God. That is a great reminder. Our God is a God of miracles, and He can do the impossible. Yes, Jesus didn't say, don't worry, I'm going to do a miracle and feed everyone. Instead, He helped His disciples take on the challenge a little bit at a time. First, they found what little food was available. Then, they helped get the whole crowd seated. Next, they passed out the food bit by bit. It's possible they kept expecting the food to run out after each person. But did the food run out? No, by the end, they had gathered more leftovers than they had begun with. Jesus miraculously fed the crowd with five loaves and two fish. In a way, this can help us see what following Jesus can be like. We won't usually know ahead of time what God's plan for us is. Sometimes we might feel frustrated or overwhelmed, but we can trust Jesus each step of the way. His plans are perfect. He will help us push through and obey. By feeding the 5,000, Jesus provided for the physical needs of the crowd 
And then the next day, Jesus called himself the bread of life. Only Jesus is able to satisfy our souls forever by providing forgiveness with peace with God and eternal life. That is right. And accepting Jesus' gift of eternal life is the most important decision we could ever make. Now, let's take some time to discuss, why did Jesus call himself the bread of life? Okay, for our activity today, we're going to make a fish. A fish? Wait, a real fish? No, Maggie, we're going to be making a fish out of the pipe cleaners that we have here. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I understand now. It's actually pretty simple, and you all that are at home, you can follow along with us. Okay, we're ready. What do we do okay. first? Take your pipe cleaner like this, and all you have to do is create a loop like this, and then twist the end of the pipe cleaner around. Do that a couple of times so it doesn't come apart. And there you go, it <gasps> forms a simple little fish. Wow, that is so cool. I'm so glad we got to learn how to make a fish today. Whenever I see my fish, I'm going to be reminded about how Jesus fed thousands of people with just two fish and five loaves of bread. That is so awesome. And yes, when we look at our fish craft, we could be reminded of the amazing miracles that Jesus did and how those miracles brought God glory. That is so awesome. As we close out our time to today, let's take some time and pray. Father, we thank you that Jesus is in control of all things. Would you give us courage to uh, trust that and obey God's plan, even when it doesn't make sense to us? We pray for all the kids who are watching this lesson. Lord, would you help it to speak to their hearts and help them to grow closer to you. In your name we pray, amen. Jesus feeding a crowd is just one of the many miraculous things that Jesus did when he was on earth. We can read about many more of them in the Bible. Our key passage comes from the book of Psalms. Psalms is a collection of songs written by many different people over many years. God's work is amazing and he does many miracles. Jesus is the son of God and he did many miracles too, including dying for our sins and rising again. Let's read our memory verse together. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Psalm 40 verse five. Wow, great job reading the verse. Are you guys ready for some of the words to disappear? Here we go. Let's try to say it again together. You have multiplied, O oh Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Psalm 40, verse five. Wow, great job. Okay, one last time, but this time try it all on your own with even more words gone. Go. Wow, awesome job today, kids. Keep working on our verse and we'll say it all together again next week.